Everybody likes a comeback story where something really bad happens, some, some real patch of bad luck, and then you recover. You recover, and then there's a happy ending. Whole ecosystems like coral reefs also recover from disasters, hurricanes, storms, and that recovery from disasters is called resilience. Resilience is one of the most important things for an ecosystem to have. When an ecosystem has resilience, it can recover from a disturbance. But an unhealthy ecosystem can lose its resilience, and once that happens, that ecosystem can be doomed. A healthy coral reef is naturally resilient. They're damaged by hurricanes, they're smothered by sediment, they're eaten by predatory starfish, and the corals and the fish recover from, from all those disturbances. It's like our immune system. Say if you, you get a bad cold, and then another bad cold, and another, and another. It takes you longer to recover every time. The same with an ecosystem. If it gets hit and hit and hit again, then it'll take a little longer and a little longer and a little longer to recover. Its resilience is eroded and eventually reefs won't recover. The recovery time will be longer than the times of the next disturbance and so the reefs will constantly be in a state of chronic disturbance. Of course, a really serious problem for places as small as American Samoa is that they could do something about the pollution and the overfishing but there's also global warming that increases seawater temperature and causes big swings in temperature that can kill the reefs. There's nothing American Samoa can do about that just on its own. The coral reefs need three things in order to survive. They need a seed source, some place to, to come back from. If the reef is disturbed, they need some place to provide the babies to regrow and rebuild the reef. We don't really know where those seeds are going to come from, the, the larvae, the embryos. Do they come from hundreds of miles away? Do they come from just a mile away? Do they come right from the reef that those babies are going to land on? The other thing they need, of course, is time. By setting aside some reef areas, where disturbance is as, as low as humanly possible. It gives those reefs just a little bit extra time to recover from disturbances that we can't do anything about. The third thing they need, of course, is a complete set of species. It's not just okay to protect the corals, you have to protect all the species in the reef. They need the full complement of, of the ecological players, the, the, the plant eaters and the, and the meat eaters, the sharks and the, and the snails and the crabs and the little fish in order to, to make for a healthy ecosystem. If there's one thing we think we've learned over the last couple of decades is that a, a healthy, complicated ecosystem has greater resilience. It has more players and can respond better to disturbance. So by providing areas that have the best possible ecological diversity, we're hoping we can make reefs that have the highest resilience.